My name is Sidney Decker. I am a professor at Griffith University. Let me tell you about a nurse. She was a longtime practitioner in a children's hospital. And then one day, a patient of hers dies of a calcium chloride overdose. The nurse is blamed, suspended, then fired. Her license to practice is revoked. Afterwards, she reportedly cried for weeks. A carer and a healer at heart, she not only lost a job, a livelihood, she lost an identity. Her psychological health deteriorated. She became increasingly depressed and isolated. And then seven months after the patient's death, she killed herself. Now the patient, the child, and its family, in this case, would be the first victim. The second victim is the nurse. Second victims are practitioners who are involved in an incident that harms or kills somebody else or has the potential to do so, for which they feel personally responsible. Second victims are not limited to healthcare. I've met second victims in air traffic control, in airliner cockpits, in process control plants, in the police, in firefighting. And two things tend to set them apart. One is trauma-like symptoms. These include hyperarousal, re-experiencing phenomena such as dreams, intrusive thoughts, flashbacks, and avoidance behavior associated with the situation that made them into a second victim. And then they typically have feelings of intense guilt. Even if they themselves are capable of pointing to all the factors in the situation that contributed to the bad outcome, they will still feel guilt because they are responsible practitioners and because somebody else put their trust in them. Now, things don't have to go badly for the second victim. I know of two pilots involved in a large accident that killed over 80 people. And through the pain and the trauma and them losing their jobs and being criminally prosecuted in a foreign country, these pilots are flying today and with another carrier and thriving. Interestingly, the, the intensity and severity of the outcome is a very bad predictor of how things might go for the second victim. I know of another pilot involved in a pretty bad accident, not of his own making. All 129 occupants of that airplane basically walked away. He did too, but he never flew again. The main determinant for how things go for a second victim is community, is social support. The mother of the nurse who committed suicide later commented that her daughter had run out of coping skills. But I wonder, was it the daughter who ran out of coping skills or was it the community that loaded too much onto her shoulders to cope with? Was it the community that offered too little support in carrying the load? How an organization, how a community deals with a second victim says a lot about how they view safety generally. If they dismiss a second victim, if they push the second victim out of view, then that signals fear, anxiety, denial, a lack of a willingness to learn from failure. In that sense, I believe there is a very important link between the resilience of a second victim and the resilience of the organization. So what should we do? As an organization, you want to make sure, first of all, that you have mechanisms in place for psychological first aid. That is, after an incident, be able to take the second victim off shift and make sure that they can recover to a level of psychological and physiological functioning that is relatively normal. Then empower the second victim. Make sure that you debrief them extensively on what may come next, on what their rights and duties may be in the, in the wake of the incident. If they want to, you may even want to involve them in the investigation. Rather than them becoming a passive recipient of the end result of the investigation, you can make them an active participant and contributor because they too will often be acutely interested in finding out how things could go so wrong. And finally, you may want to think about 
organizing or facilitating an encounter between first and second victim, but only, only if both are ready for that. Now, it may be a good idea to have such processes run by peers, those who do the work of the second victim, who know intimately its messy details, and not managers who, after all, can create career jeopardy for the second victim. And finally, make sure you don't automatically medicalize or pathologize second victims. They feel what they feel, they suffer what they suffer, not because they are sick, but because they're human, like you and I.